Yo, what's up you guys, it's Grim here, and welcome back to day 7 of the Redstone Academy. Now, it being day 7, that means that it also marks the first day for phase 2 of the series, which you will be learning more advanced circuits in. Last episode, we had test day. Now, it was just basically a short little episode of a couple, various circuits branching from harder to build to a little bit easier, and it really tests your wrestle knowledge to see if you're actually ready to be able to comprehend uh, more, like more advanced redstone circuits so you're not overloading yourself. I would definitely recommend going and watching day one through five and taking the test before you actually proceed onto the circuits because that is how this academy is supposed to work out because I'm trying to introduce you to things in a certain order so that you don't overload yourself by accident. However, that was last episode and in this episode we will be beginning the circuits phase also known as phase two now today specifically you will be learning various different types of clocks and how you actually use them is up to you i'm not going to be as direct in this series i'm going to show you how they work and give you the example of what they look like how to build it and where you use it that is completely up to you now just a friendly reminder as usual the link to each world is in the description of the respective video meaning that day one will be in day one and the day two world download will be in day two and so on one last thing this series is also based on the better condition of minecraft and results may vary between versions however the concepts do remain the same for the most part with that all being said let's get right into it all right you guys now on this phase as you can see right here it is a lot less dense than the previous days and that is because i'm just going to be showing you specific circuits how they work and then you can obviously utilize them into your redstone circuits now primarily with phase two i'm going to be introducing you to the most common types and then we might add some in later on in phase three or phase four which are some extremely complicated forms of these which can actually be much more useful than uh your usual little basic circuits i'm going to be showing you in phase two but with all that being said let's get right into it day seven clocks all right, a redstone clock, a circuit that will repeat automatically at a given speed based upon the components you use. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add on to this. It's really based upon your use scenario. If you want a fast clock, obviously you're going to put fast clock in, a slow clock, slow clock in. And uh, really clocks are used to repeat when you give it a power signal or toggleable. That's what clocks are used for. So you can have a toggleable repeated signal. So right here, we have some very simple torch clocks. We're going to start off nice and simple. So this torch clock, uh, this is actually a method that is used uh, to get ender pearl dispensers because as you can see here when you press a button it gives off one two three four five six seven eight it will give off eight inputs and if you put a dispenser right here and here all right now once you have the dispensers you can go ahead and fill them up with ender pearls and you want to use a wood button because uh, when you use a stone button uh, it will only give seven but when you use a wood button it will give eight so when you press a button uh, I don't have this quite set up properly so I'm getting some weird uh, numbers here but it dispenses out eight from each dispenser now this is a little bit off topic i know but it's just something cool that you know a lot of people wonder how you actually make these things it it's using a little simple torch clock like this and it will automatically give you a full stack of ender pearls if you have two dispensers yeah okay i stand corrected you can use the stone button uh it will still give you 16 my bad all right but moving on to a little bit more of an advanced redstone clock that uh, won't actually burn out on you and this one is actually one of the fastest clocks that you can get and it's a double-sided redstone torch clock and if you flick the lever you'll see that both of these are just going to get ridiculously fast signals sent to them and uh, the cool thing about this is you can take two separate outputs uh, from either side it doesn't matter or you can just take one obviously and uh, it, it's just a really cool little clock obviously there are much more practical clocks but if you don't have access to comparators observers the nether in general this is probably your best bet for a, a simple little toggleable clock in your redstone builds for the early game all right up next we have some very simple repeater clocks now these are clocks i tend to go to when uh you know i first start off my game or if i'm in creative and i just want to make a stupid little fast dispenser arrow dispenser thing and you know i just don't have observers i don't have comparators or you know i'm just fiddling around but these i don't usually use these however uh if you don't have access to that stuff this can be useful sometimes but uh this is one that i use a lot and it's just two repeaters like this with redstone and if you put a redstone block here and put a torch on it it will instantly invert it causing it to just give off a little one take pulse which will give you a ridiculously fast clock now the downside about this is it is not toggleable but once 
one thing that you can do is this. All right, now obviously this isn't the most practical thing in the world. Now, if you have comparator clocks and observers, I would recommend using those. I will show you uh, those clocks later on. But for now, this is a simple little clock idea. Uh, you can toggle it on and off with this piston right here, obviously using some hard powered blocks. And it does require you use repeaters on both sides because if you do decide to put redstone down, it will actually power the piston. So what you need to do is go ahead and just put that to repeaters. And if you want to turn it off, you just run a redstone to the piston you know stop the clock if you want to turn back on you can go like this obviously if you have a comparator clock observers access to that stuff this is not viable but it's just a cool little circuit all right and up next we have this little clock that is highly adjustable uh but you basically you put a torch down and it repeats it goes around in circles and if you break it you can obviously adjust the timings for a longer slower clock and uh once again with that method over there you can use this method again and uh, some people actually do use it because you want a uh, specific timing sometimes that you can't get with, uh, let's say, uh, a comparator clock, which, I mean, a lot of people will use hopper timers for stuff like that. But uh, repeaters can be very viable. However, just know that there are better options. And the last one is just this little gimmick where I took out one repeater, and I've, it's just, it's like a, a weird little clock. I mean, I wouldn't even use this thing personally, but I just thought it was a cool idea using uh, powered blocks mechanics and stuff, and you can make something looking like this. All right, so the next thing that we have are comparator clocks. This is where things start to get a little bit more reasonable, as you could say, uh, uh, as in ease of use and just uh, overall compactness. So there's two primary ways of doing this. There is hard powering a block into the back of a comparator in subtraction mode you want to make sure this little redstone torch right here is turned on as you guys know what subtraction mode is if you have watched redstone academy up to this point and then you can obviously just go ahead and put a direct power source in the back either way this works this is a comparator clock it is probably uh my favorite clock to use if i don't need to be ridiculously compact which i will show you the uh the clock the best clock for ridiculously compact builds now all right and that clock is going to be the observer clock now uh i do enjoy using this in compact builds because in compact builds typically you have little to no redstone dust and you want everything to be blocked so uh what you can do is move these little observers around obviously you can get a redstone output like that if you push them into each other or you can have them continuously being inside of each other and push a power block to one side and obviously that will give off a redstone signal here here uh, you could have them coming off everywhere basically if you uh, power from the top or bottom you can have one coming off all three sides but this is probably my favorite little clock to use in compact builds and one thing to make sure is that you place the observer faces facing into each other so that they continuously detect each other sending out rest on inputs or outputs I should say and that will give off another update causing each one to just continuously go ahead and power up all right now getting away from uh the comparator and the observer clocks we are going to be getting into a little bit of a more long-term timing clock so what this is this is a hopper clock now uh, a hopper clock is very simple you put one item in here or however many items you want and then you can lock it with a lever unlock it and it's just going to go ahead and repeatedly send out a signal now if you put a couple more items in here it is just not going to work and the reason why i will actually show you in a second but uh for now i'm going to actually go ahead and get into the little four-way one which is pretty much the exact same thing if you put in extra items uh if you do put in extra items you do need to time them correctly to make sure that uh, one hopper will be open at all times or you know vice versa but basically you just unlock it once again and it's just going to give you a little bit longer of a pulse and obviously uh just be careful with the amount of items that you put in here i i really wouldn't recommend going over one of these because there is a much better option if you want to put a longer clock onto your restaurant contraptions and that is going to be ethos hopper clock now this hopper clock basically it uses a redstone block going back and forth to lock the hopper but what is going on is when you put an item in here i'm actually going to grab a couple of items because it's a little bit hard to do it with just one but you put like a stack of items in here and it's all it, it's going to take a compared output this side pushing this piston forward now when they immediately go in here uh it is going to give an output here but if there are both sticky pistons and one is already extended this one's not going to be able to extend because this is technically an immovable object an extended piston isn't a movable object so that is going to go ahead and lock this hopper meaning that this hopper cannot actually send any items back and as you can see right there it is just going to flip flop and it is a hopper clock which you can actually just go ahead and lock by locking one of the hoppers up and there now it's locked now it's unlocked and it's just 
uh, this this can be used as a pulse extender too, but you know a clock. I mean, this is really just the ultimate redstone circuit in my opinion. This is probably literally one of the most important circuits, and it's basically just a long-term clock which you use if you don't want a fast repeating pulse and you just want something slow. An Ethos Hopper Clock obviously is a very good choice to go ahead and shoot out items very slowly, but and it's just something that is really awesome. And if we didn't have this. I honestly don't know what the rest of the community would do. Now, just to go ahead and slow summarize everything up. These are my personal choices. Now, number one is going to be the comparator clock. These are in no particular order, by the way. This is just a good all around clock and pretty much is going to be the clock that you want to use in like any scenario unless you obviously can't get quartz then i would recommend the uh double redstone torch clock which just you know a redstone torch on each side with a piece of redstone dust in the middle that's the clock that i would recommend otherwise always use the comparator clock for literally everything i mean it's so simple it's just a comparator subtraction mode three redstone dust and there you go it's perfect now the next one is going to be the observer clock and uh, i find that this is best to be used in like compact builds and the reason why is just because of how small it is and how versatile and how many outputs you can take from such a, a couple of limited little spots and i just think that it's it's a great clock it's very uh useful you can move the observer around i mean the, uh, there's just something that, that it can do that the comparator clock can't like uh, power blocks from underneath and such things like that. I mean, I'm sure the comparator clock can power stuff from underneath, but it's just going to be a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So if you are making compact stuff, I would always recommend it, the observer clock just for its versatility and movability. And finally, the last one is Ethos Hopper Timer. It is just the, the best hopper clock for long clock times. I mean, you really cannot beat the Ethos Hopper Timer for a long-term clock i mean it's it's if someone can make a design better than this i will literally give them my youtube channel but yeah these are my top three picks if you want to know just uh, uh clocks that i would recommend and these will be the three clocks unless you know obviously your use case scenarios will vary uh between needs and such but this is what i recommend and if you want to defer or if you want to look up more advanced clock go for it honestly there's there's a lot of clocks in this video that i did not actually cover but these are really just the only clocks that you really will ever need. Alrighty, guys, and that is going to be it for this episode of the Redstone Academy. I know that I just rambled on on like a bunch of little circuits and especially the Ethos Hopper Timer. I'm sorry, I'm a fanboy over it. I love that thing. It's just completely amazing. Once you actually learn how to use this thing, like you're, you'll just realize that it is straight up the best Redstone circuit, like the best Redstone circuit. But yeah, go ahead and just experiment with these, use them, research, make up your own. I mean, honestly, the possibilities are endless. You could be the next Ethel Hopper Timer. You could make the next best uh, staple circuit of the Minecraft community that literally everyone uses. So with all that being said, if you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe. I do want to make Redstone a lot easier for people to understand in Minecraft. And liking it and sharing it with people would definitely be appreciated to go ahead and get this series out there. But yeah, with all that being said, I've been Grim, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.